Hello and welcome. I am Pastor Felix Malpica and here we are uh, doing worship from home once again and it looks like we will be doing that at least for the next month. So be prepared to gather together in one body and one spirit sharing the light of Christ with one another in this way. So make sure you have a candle ready like I do. Uh, we'll be lighting a candle each time that we worship together to remind ourselves that the one light of Christ continues to shine in and through all of us, that the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, continues to gather us and pray for us, uh, that we are still the community gathered, that we still have an opportunity to worship and to pray and to sing and to share God's love with each other, especially in these times when uh, it would be easy to just feel isolated and alone and to fall into fear and despair, but rather we will continue to worship and pray and to be uplifted knowing that we are not alone, that we are still a community gathered together and that God is still with us. So now let's take a moment to take a deep breath, to remember the breath of God that is with us and around us at all times, and then to light this candle, your candle in your home, to remind ourselves that we are joined together in one light in Christ. So first, let's breathe. Take a big deep breath in and let it out. Take a second deep breath in and let it out. And a third time, take a deep cooling breath in and let it out. <sighs> Welcome to worship. And we begin by singing our opening hymn, Thick with Love. Oh, 
And now let us continue with a word of prayer. A prayer for those of us who are at home with families, and a prayer for those who are at home alone. Let us pray. Gracious God, none who trust in your Son can be separated from your love. Give to those who live alone peace and contentment in their solitude, hope and fulfillment in their love of you, and joy and companionship in their relations with others. Triune God, whose will it is that humans live in community, bless family life everywhere, and fill all homes with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Strengthen the commitments of those who are living together, that they may mirror your covenant faithfulness. Pour out your spirit on parents, that through them their children may taste your unconditional love, and empower all family members to live in your grace and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us read from Psalm 147. Praise the Eternal. It is good to sing praises to our God, for praise is beautiful and pleasant. The Eternal, architect of the earth, is building Jerusalem, finding the lost, gathering Israel's outcast. He binds their wounds, heals the sorrows of their hearts. He counts all the stars within his hands, carefully fixing their number and giving them names. Our Lord is great. Nothing is impossible with his overwhelming power. He is loving, compassionate and wise beyond all measure. The Eternal will lift up the lowly, but throw down the wicked to the earth. Open your mouths with thanks. Sing praises to the Eternal. Strum the harp in unending praise to our God, who blankets the heavens with clouds, sends rain to water the thirsty earth, and pulls up each blade of grass upon the mountainside. He opens his hands to feed all the animals and scatters seed to nestlings when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the raw strength of horses. He finds no joy in the speed of the sprinter, but the Eternal does take pleasure in those who worship him, those who invest hope in his unfailing love. O Jerusalem, Praise the Eternal. O Zion, praise your God, for God's divine power reinforces your city gates, blesses your children in the womb. He establishes peace within your borders, fills your markets with hearty golden wheat, commands ripples across the earth, and his word runs out on swift feet. She blankets the earth in woolly snow, scattering frost like ashes over the land. She throws down hail like stones falling from a mountain. Can any withstand her wintry blast? But she dispatches her word, and the thaw begins. At her command, the spring winds blow, gently stirring the waters back to life. This is the word of the Lord. So this week, uh, we continue following this Lenten study, which I, I actually really love. It's been great at highlighting the great work of the ELCA around the country and around the world, the, the wonderful ministry of ELCA World Hunger. So uh, thank you to them and their work, to Global Mission and their work, uh, to the whole Lutheran Church around the world and, and how we are displaying God's love not just through our words, but also through our actions. And thank you to those who uh, wrote this curriculum. Um, 
these are powerful words. If you haven't had a chance to use it, it's free. You can order it online, uh, go to their website and get it, um, or you can call us and um, if you're here in Janesville, we can get one of these books to you if you haven't been able to follow along. Tonight's message um, draws from Psalm 147 and from the story that we were studying this last week. It was about um, leadership. And that sometimes leadership means being able to see things anew, being able to see hope where others might not be able to see hope. That uh, sometimes we as the church need to reimagine, reevaluate, um, and see new sources and possibilities of life uh, in our new circumstances. The study begins with this great quote about hope um, it says hope continues to sing in the difficult most chaotic of times and in so doing strengthens the resolve to keep moving despite what life may throw it demands nothing but sweetly sings and keeps one warm in the bitter cold right now um that's exactly what hope is in the midst of these times when uh, everything is uncertain we don't know what is going to change from day to day we don't know when this will end uh, we're finding out today that in wisconsin uh, we're being called not to leave our homes unless it's absolutely necessary uh, and people are worried, people are fearsome, people are concerned, and where is the hope to come? And yet, it continues to sing. Um, it continues to sing as, as people reach out to one another in new and interesting ways around town. People have been putting hearts uh, outside their homes. Uh, some places they're putting a candle in their windows to let each other know, hey, I'm here for you. Uh, some people have put their Christmas lights back up on their homes uh, to, sh to shed a little hope, to say that we're still here for one another. We still love one another. Uh, we are still community. And in the church, we continue to worship together, to sing together, to lift each other up, uh, to have small groups uh, to support one another. Uh, we have of everything from our youngest kids uh, our youth group is meeting uh, virtually and even our oldest members uh, Laverne and Norma joined us for our small group gathering um, and and it's amazing we're all learning to do community in in a brand new way it goes on to talk a little bit later about hope and that hope isn't just fluffy but uh goes on to say hoping is an act of trust and it's a dangerous sort of thing with all due respect to dickinson who's the poet they were talking about earlier who hasn't felt the sharp pang of a dashed hope to hope is to trust that we are committing ourselves to something worthwhile and to hope in the future god has promised is to give oneself over to a promise that so often seems unlikely or unexpected that we we put ourselves um in in a pretty precarious place as we think about hoping for a new brighter tomorrow that yeah uh, sometimes those hopes sting because we don't see them fulfilled and yet we need to continue hope despite that despite um, not being able to imagine an alternative way uh, we hope that God is bigger grander um, more powerful that we can imagine and so there is always hope there is always hope it goes on to talk about what hope in this season of Lent means and says uh, the hope fostered in the season of Lent is a challenging hope that demands much from us. It calls us to let go of our prejudgments and preconceptions. It invites us to see as God sees, 
to give ourselves over in hope and trust to the role God has called us to play. It moves on from there to lift up uh, a leader, Jamie Stark, who, who reimagines or or sees differently what communion can be uh, in in the community he's called to lead. And right now, I just think about um, us. Right now, we are reimagining what it means to be a gathered community what does it mean to be the gathered body of christ right now when we're being called to stay in our homes to stay at least six feet away from one another what does it mean to be the body of christ um and and we need leaders we need leaders to help us to do that so even if you feel a little bit uncomfortable by uh engaging technology try it um, because we need to lead. We need to show the world that it's possible to care for one another, to love each other, uh, uh, to be there for one another, despite the fact that we can't get together physically. So we're reimagining what it means to be the body of Christ, to be a gathered people who worship, who pray, who sing together. Uh, and I'm actually kind of loving it a little bit. Um, it's, it's stretching me for sure. I, I, here I am uh, in my home. Uh, I took over our newborn's room. He's not really using it right now anyways because he sleeps in the bassinet in our room. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to be leading this community from this room. But as I saw last Sunday, it's, it's an amazing community. We were able to worship together, to sing together, to comment together. Um, and it was actually fun. And when, when I got done, my heart was lifted up. Uh, and so let's continue to dream. Let's continue to hope. We don't know when this time will be over, when we will be able to embrace one another, when we'll be able to stand in the same space. But for now, we are going to dare to see community in a new way, to participate in a brand new way to show each other God's love is bigger and broader than we might have imagined. And so we continue to be one body in Christ. We continue to have hope and we continue to share God's love with one another. So now we're going to move into a time of prayer. We'll be singing, bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. And you'll hear me singing different prayer petitions, and your response will be the same every time. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. Bring your best to our worst, bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. That none who cry out loud may cry out in vain. Bring your best to our worst, bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. That those who live in fear may never walk alone. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of That those who are near death may see the light of day. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. 
that those who live with guilt may find themselves forgiven. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. That those who live with doubt may find a deeper faith. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. That those who live in brokenness may know they will be whole. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. For the healing of creation, that it may be renewed. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. That the leaders of the nations may walk the road of peace. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your peace. That the walls we build between us, may we learn to tear them down. Bring your best to our worst. Bring your peace to our pain. God of love, heal your people. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. And I pray that this was able to give you a little bit of peace, a little bit of hope in the midst of these very uncertain times and as we think about how we have an opportunity to share and to give hope to others consider giving a donation tonight um, click on the tithely link that you'll find below and uh, give to faith's little friends uh, our teachers who care for the children in our care are now in a very uh, precarious place uh, we can't continue um, to open up our doors for the sake of their safety and ours and they don't have an opportunity to turn to unemployment or to other uh, sources of help so we need to lift them up we need to give them hope we need to show them that we will be there for them in this very difficult time so please consider giving uh, and go to the two sections scroll down and give to face little friends so that we can continue to support them and give them hope in these very difficult times god bless you